Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're, we're going to look at this commercial for Toys R Us. That, have you seen this? Have you guys I seen do. this? Oh, I've seen it. I thought you meant me. Oh, I mean you and other people okay. watching. You're I can't tell. You're talking to me. Go ahead. I am. Uh, we're we're going to talk about this because this is this is crazy. This was done with OpenAI's Sora, which we talked about, which can generate video footage from prompts. Now, it's uncanny. It looks weird. It but looks really weird, yeah. It looks really weird. Like weird as far as looking realistic, mostly. Yeah, but the, I guess my takeaway from this is it's the technology is almost there to be able to create video just whole cloth from AI. I thought it was funny when they're going through the toys and they're like, they're like not quite that brand toys because they don't want to get in trouble. Right, right. So I thought that was funny. So we'll we'll look at this commercial. I mean, this is so weird. Like you you pointed out on on Twitter. Oh no, I was just saying like they said you know Toys R Us was a dream of Charles Lazarus and Member Berries, Toys R Us kid, and I'm like yeah, but the company filed for bankruptcy, and I remember when they did, they completely canned all their employees, and they just got like you know hey you're fired, you're done, and closed a bunch of stores, liquidated a bunch of stuff, took the money, got out of bankruptcy, and now they're trying to move forward with it like Member Berries and all this crap, but they they screwed over their employees. And I mean, that's corporate Toys R Us, not Charles Lazarus. But I'm just saying they screwed their people over yeah. in the U.S. anyway. Yeah, and he he died. Ironically, he died a couple days, I guess, after they shut down Toys R Us. Like, it was like, it's crazy. But this whole thing, they're talking about bringing it back as a, uh, potentially as a zombie brand. They were, they had the, I remember they had the Toys R Us stores within a store. Yeah, they had them in like different, like, yeah, Macy's or something. Yeah, um, and this is a, this coming from the Verge. They said the old Toys R Us turned into a hot or turned to hot technology amidst its bankruptcy filing back in 2017, releasing an AR app to attract customers. And then there were going to be a, I remember an online store only, and then that didn't work out. It said 2018 was the end of the road for the giant toy store, began closing or selling its final 800 locations in the UK. They recently launched some dedicated toy stores under the brand, mm. however, as well as outlets inside of a WH Smith stores. And uh, they opened two larger Toys R Us stores in the U.S. And they talked about doing as many as 24 this year. And this is probably, honestly, part of that that comeback. But, yeah, this is like a zombie brand. They but they, were, they shafted their employees. Yeah. And and they sold the buildings off and shafted their employees. I'm sure the, the, the corporate executives got all kinds of money. And then now they're just like, oh, remember Toys R Us? Remember Barry Shop Toys R Us? You love Toys R Us, right? No, I did. Toys R Us, well, one, their prices were always too high. But two, you screwed over a bunch of employees. And one of your relatives is one of them. Yeah, so let's uh, let's talk about this. The reaction is not good uh, to this at all. People are, you know, we have a lot of people that are just angry about the situation and it being a zombie brand. And, they're and then they use an AI commercial on top of it like uh, the, how can we make this shit storm worse how, i know how can we make it worse but my my takeaway now light it on fire too <laughs> light that shit on fire my takeaway from this though is this has gotten scary good scary fast and i know people are concerned about uh you know the future of ai and you know whether or not everything is going to be made by ai in the future and they're like oh it looks kind of uncanny valley i'm like do you remember early cgi do you remember the Pixar baby? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look how far we've come. I think it looks pretty. I mean, there's there you can tell yeah, CGI some places, but for the most part, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, it's and that's a scary, not good thing. That's a scary, not yeah. And we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about how consumers feel about uh, AI and entertainment because it's not going anywhere. No, but people aren't very. It depends. People in video games seem to be a little more accepting than people um, in TVs and, and film. And it depends on what it is. If it's something like generating character ideas, they're fine with it. But if it's like replacing people, they're not really down with the idea. Uh, yeah, and I, I joked about uh, Tom Hanks never stepping down from movies because they can just de-age him or replace him with AI, and they're already doing it. I know. You they, did joke about they that. Have, they have. That was what, like one of the last what videos. South Park over here. Yeah, and I know, like, right? Yeah. Um, I said that, you know, if if you can have Tom Hanks forever, why hire new actors? And they have a new movie coming out. It's called Here. And they're de-aging him like 30 years throughout mm -hmm. the whole movie. It's not just a flashback scene like they do in the Marvel movies or whatever. This is like the entire movie. It's going to be, you know, 30-year-old Tom Hanks. And it's, it's kind of uncanny. But it, like if you just show me that photo, I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's Tom Hanks from about like 1990-ish. No, 
it's it's all it's all being done with uh, AI and stuff. So let's talk about this before you get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, get yeah, woohoo if you do. Woohoo! So we're gonna watch this. Uh, we're gonna watch this commercial. It's only a minute. We're gonna react to it. But it, it's it's scary how good this has gotten and in places other places it's other places very obvious it's but the fact that they could create this now i don't think it was entirely from prompts they might have had some photo references or something but it it just it's scary it's it's scary how quickly this is progressing now i gotta give a uh, a hat tip to culture crave that uh, posted this and it's well we're gonna leave the comments too people are are weirded out by it well i think this might be a photo prompt yeah this looks like a, a photo Did you ever wonder how Toys R Us and Jeffrey the Giraffe came to be? No. The son of a bike shop owner, Charles Lazarus, had a vision that would go on to change... I mean, you can tell, like, with the toys and stuff that it's it's AI because, like you said, they look like they're not not quite real. Like, they're kind of, sort of, but not quite, but... The people, the hair and the faces and stuff, like we're not getting like multiple layers of teeth or when, anything. When they're focused on them and they're like, you know, they're moving, you can tell a little bit. A little bit. Toy stores forever. Like you can tell. If you know what you're looking for, yeah. But like his hair's, yeah, you can kind of tell, like it seems like his clothes are kind of detached from. The gray. All the off-brand toys. Yeah, all the generic toys. We got like, what is it? Like a Bratz, except it's a a Bratz doll and a Bratz Berry Shortcake. Yeah, all of or these. Brat Bo Bright. Brat Mo Bright. Brat Bro. Brat, Brat Bro. No, that's the new one. Brat Bros. It's Brat Bro Bright, guys. Brat Bro it's the Bright. new modern version of, of you know. It's very modern. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rainbow. For it's the same person. Wink, wink. <laughs> so is the music, is the music AI too? Because it sounds really like. I don't know. It's like. It's like uh, Aaron Neville to sing it. Remember you sing the Little People song? Yeah, I remember, the, I remember <laughs> We used to watch, yeah, Squid King. He had the little, he loved Love little, little people. people. Like, you don't understand. So we get the VHS tapes. It, yeah, that's how it dates. But they would come with the toys sometimes. And then he'd watch the, like, the and claymation. Anyway, Aaron never would sing the song. It was, oh it, was it was a painful, it was painful experience. Anyway, There's, not quite My Little Pony. These are like the knockoff ponies you find at the dollar store. And so what's, the, what's, the, what's that little silver thing with the eyes supposed to be like? Iron Giant's head? I don't. I don't know. I just ran, so that's where you can tell. Like it just looks like a bunch of like just stuff kind of piled. You know that's that's when you can tell. But again, the the fact that this was generated from prompts, we're we're gonna we're gonna have a completely AI generated motion picture probably within the next year or two. I remember when people were like, well, Toy Story came out. You know, you can't go see this movie because it's going to hurt your eyes. It's it's a fad. CGI is never going to last. Yep. But here we are. Here we are. Toys R Us Us was the dream of Charles Lazarus. May all of your dreams come true, too. Well, the people that work there don't have the dreams now because you fired their and ass the to liquidate. Continu- the yeah. dream continues at Macy's, yes. He's on with the Toys R Us at every Macy's. Yeah, that's what they're doing now. <laughs> this so, is Kmart and Sears all over Yeah, again. pretty much. Pretty much. All right, so that's that's what they're doing with them. They're putting them in Macy's. Didn't they, don't they have Sephora in Macy's or is that JCPenney? It was JCPenney. But look, like, look, you know, I love Toys R Us. I mean, when we were kids... I didn't get to go very often. Like you had one by your house. Me, yeah. we had to go like two hours to go to Toys R Us or something. So we didn't get to go much. I do remember getting in the parking lot once because my dad was looking for Super Mario Brothers two for my brother for Christmas, and we basically sat in the car where he ran in to ask, and we were. I was like, but the Toys R Us is right there, you know. We yeah. we didn't get to go to Toys R Us much, but um, we went when Squid King was little, and because it was by the house we lived in, because we went we moved to where Neon was from. And uh, it was great, but the prices were high. But he yeah. loved it. 
not as bad as KB. I worked no, I worked KB at KB worse. Toy. KB was like, well, I had to pay those mall rents, right? So yeah, KB, KB was, was way was more expensive. Worse. But I know Squid King and, and, and Pinky Boo, they love to go to Toys R Us. Yeah, I, I, I miss that. I miss having those aisles. I miss those the commercials. Yeah. Walls of toys. Like like kids today don't, no, kids today aren't playing with toys anyway, but like. No, kids today they see this shit and think that's how it was. Yeah, yeah. it's like, no, that's not, it was, it was cool though. Like it was back, real people, man. Back in our day, back in our time, like you would walk into these, these massive toy stores and there'd be like a, just a wall of star Wars figures or wall of, you know, my little pony or a wall of like, it was like, Monster a, High. yeah, it was like a mass, like they would have a whole aisle dedicated to one or two toy lines. And even like my favorite was actually Hills. And we talked about Hills. <laughs> Hills. Oh my Hills. God. I like Hills, Hills better than Toys R Us. Hills is the best. I don't care. We had a Hills. That was like 30 minutes away. I love, we were always at Hills. Hills was like proto target for the Northeast. Like they were mostly Pennsylvania and Ohio, I think, but yeah, they had a great toy section. I still remember the masters of the universe section. And I remember the, the you know, star Wars and they were like entire aisles. It was great. Full of toys. It was great. I remember going there. Yeah. And I, I remember like the Teddy Ruxpin end cap. And I mean, I was too old for Teddy Ruxpin, but I remember it. And I remember going to the Barbie aisle and the whole aisle would be just Barbie dolls and stuff like that. I also remember the stupid joke. I remember tell was it something like, you know, why do kids like Dolly Parton? Yeah. Because hills are where the toys are. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so Lots that. of jokes. And so it's, anybody that's from this area knows what I'm talking and about. It smells, smells like a carnival because you go in there and they have the hot dogs and the popcorn. There is literally a truck in Pittsburgh that they have, they have brought back the hills. Um, it's a food truck that they, they, do, they do the hills uh, food court, the little food snack thing. Oh, my God. There, there's, a, there's a food truck in Pittsburgh that does it. Our, our hills, a deer. I mean, this is a very Pennsylvania thing, but a deer got loose in hills. And, yes, uh, I remember you telling me. Well, I know where it was, and it was like right off the woods. It was literally near a hill, and I thought I thought that it was called Hills when I was a kid because it was near a hill. It like was like literally mountain. at the base of a hill. Like it was like the base of a mountain into this into the store. And uh, yeah, so somebody opened the door. There's a deer in the parking lot, and somebody opened the door to to come out, or the doors open, and it ran inside <laughs> hills. And they had to, it was it made the news. They had to go get this deer out of the hills. It was in the food court area, and it broke a window, I guess, trying to get out. Oh, it, I know, it probably got hurt. No, it took bad. off. I remember, I was there. Yeah, but we were watching. It wasn't hurt. But we were watching. We're sitting in the car watching this go down. I'm like, oh, you, you were know. there when it happened. Yeah, I was there when it happened. I was like, oh, look, there's a deer. I, I think you talked about it, but I didn't know you were actually no, there. No, that's why I remember so well, because we were there, and we were going back to the car, and I'm like, oh, look, there's a deer coming down the hill by hills. Isn't that funny? Oh, wait, the deer's going into hill. Oh, wait, the deer's in hills. Okay, we got in the car. We're like, okay, this deer's very angry and very but, confused. Knowing your grandparents, they probably sat there just to watch what happened. Yeah. That's, that was very your um, grandparents. And I think it was raining. I don't remember. But yeah, it got loose inside the hills, and it broke a window, and it made the news and everything. I was like, that was crazy. Anyway. Uh, reactions here. Stephen Ford, straight up corporate boomer cringe. Uh, Pog says, I think non AI productions are safe for a long time. No, uh, I don't think they are. This person is correct. You must be living under a rock if you haven't seen how fast it's progressed. It's progressing very quickly. Over the last year. Yeah, it's not even, we're not even talking like, oh yeah, and you know, five years. Like five years ago, AI was not even a thing anybody really thought about. And then in the last, you know, two years, it just has escalated. People are making fun of how bad AI art was and how bad the writing was. And, oh, this AI generated script, it's terrible. Ha, ha, ha. Let's laugh at it. To, oh, my God, they're doing entire commercials. And then the next step will... I mean, you can tell. You can AI tell. In several places. But other places, it looks pretty good. But I think those are ones that are based on a photo. I think they had photos. Based of, on, yeah. like, you know, they had a person they based it on or something. They had a kid or something. They probably yeah. scanned Because you face can tell there's a big difference between some of the scenes and other parts. Uh... We need Toys R Us to go bankrupt again. Holy I know, shit. Before they employ, they, before they like lose, they take a bunch of employees and fire them again. Looks incredibly lifeless and empty. And again, this I, look, I'm not trying to freak people out and I'm not even defending AI usage. I'm saying people said the exact same things about CGI. They did. I was there. I remember. I, there, remember. I remember there being a review and I was in the Bay Area at the time and there was a review for Toy Story and the reviewer said, yeah, it was a pretty okay movie, but it looks pretty lifeless. And I don't think the CGI thing is going to catch no, on. Don't. And it, it hurts your eyes. And I don't think people are going to go to movies two hours of, of CGI. It's just, we're not there yet. It's okay in small doses like Jurassic Park, but we're not quite there where people are going to pay to sit through. And the movie was a huge hit. And then Disney, within five or six years, pivoted everything to, to CGI, mm -hmm. for better or for worse. You know, It is what it is. And, they're, and Disney's going all in on AI. But it's interesting. So Variety had an article um, 
that they're looking, they, they were talking to people about that they thought about generative AI in regards to content. So just go down to the charts. So they have some different charts. We're talking about consumer interest in engaging with media content created with generative AI. And actually, it's it's funny. The biggest one is no difference in video yeah. games and stuff. Watching a movie, if you knew, a lot of people were less interested, you know, et cetera. But when they go down, you can swear on some more. There's different ones here. They have this chart about who's using it, who's not in relation to video games and TV and things like they have. The blue is used regularly but don't pay. The gray is not interested. The red is aware but not, you know, right. don't use it. And you can see the numbers um, for those starting to use it. And actually not even the black, the ones in the blue, they're, they're starting to go up. Yeah. Uh, but for people using them. And have subscriptions they pay for. But when they're talking about aspects of film and TV down here, um, it, it, depending on what the topic is, depends on what's acceptable. Digital replica of a deceased actor. Of course, most people aren't okay with it. Right, right. Digital replica of a human actor. Uh, people are about the same. Not okay with it. A uh, synthetic actor who isn't a real person. People are about the same. Don't want it. Now, as you go on, scripts and screenplays, well, we were a little more accepting of that. Seamless dubbed with uh, AI voices, 31%. It's down. They think that's one's okay. Uh, original music score, they're thinking it's mostly okay, et cetera. So as you go down further, and then, then you get down here, sound effects or illustrations for animation yeah. or special effects or does the character designs. Now you're coming into the, you know, 50-some percent range. People are fine with it. So th they're... More people are fine with it on things like that, but it's still putting people out of work. But when you're talking about actually a whole cloth using AI to replace people, generate a commercial like the Toys R Us one completely, they're not into it. They don't like the idea. They don't want it. Well, this kind of reminds me of the, uh, what was it, the Coca-Cola commercial um, where they were bringing back celebrities was a pro oh, star. Yeah, like, yeah, and they had like Nat King Cole was in it. And Nat King Cole people. was in it. And that was a whole controversy too where they had Nat King Cole singing with his daughter. Mm -hmm. um, which I think in that case was, I mean, that's something I think he probably would have wanted. But but just like reanimating dead celebrities. But the thing is, is that I think we're, we're getting to that point where we already have celebrities making deals for their voices. Uh, pretty soon they're going to make deals for their likenesses. And like I said, you know, you think I'm kidding about Tom Hanks being in movies forever. I'm not kidding. Tom Hanks or, or it was so funny you said that, and that's what they, he was the one I used as an example. It um, was because he's always doing everything, like the you know, oh, you know, he's doing a Polar Express again too, isn't he? I they're don't doing know. another one, I think. But I'm like, yeah, they're just gonna they're just gonna de-age and use Tom Hanks forever, and then they turn around like, here's an entire movie of de-aged Tom Hanks. It's true. So, and the next thing will be Harrison Ford. He'll just sell his his likeness to like Lucasfilm or something. I don't know. I don't think he's the. T I don't think he. I don't think he would. Um, but you I never know. He might. People are going to do that though. They're going to have. You're going to have an iconic actor, and they're going to sell their likeness or sell their voice or whatever. And we're just going to use them forever. Casey you know, so Kasem no is, is shaggy forever. No you know? one else is going to get a turn. No. You know what I mean? And that's not good either. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's good, but what what I'm seeing though is the general public. I think. AI has been in just the last two years has been injected into everything, even your banking apps, your phone, your computer, your everything. And people aren't even aware they're using it. Um, the people that are having the biggest fit about it, obviously, are creatives because I think that's the most obvious you know, example of it, it putting people out of work, but like it's, 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 I think people are just going to accept it. And I'm sorry, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying they're, they're going to. They're already seeing it. They're accepting of some things, not others. It's right. just a matter of time. Like uh, the AI, especially when it comes to language or music, they're talking about if you use folk forward language for localizations and they're like down here below, um, they're, they're likely, they're more likely, um, to do it, then people are there, they're yeah. less likely to accept it because they can make it sound like the actor originally. Um, but instead of hiring the actor because they can't speak that language, they're just going to make it sound like the actor. You know, so it's going to it's going to replace people, and it's not good. But the, the they're more okay with sound and audio and like you know early concept stuff with AI than it is to replace people, you know whole cloth. But you, it's it's still a foothold. It's yeah. It starts it, somewhere. It's going to keep creeping up and creeping up, and it, eventually it's going to be accepted. And you're going to have you're going to have a vocal minority of people. That are like, I don't want anything to do with it. Just like you had people that were against CGI animation. And I understand it because, you know, 2D animation was was how it was for decades. Yeah, you can't find 2D animators. No. Need them. And that was a huge problem. Like, I remember with uh, the Mary Poppins sequel that Disney did, they they actually had to pull guys out of retirement. And I don't think that's right. They actually pushed these guys out 
uh, out of the workforce because they just made the the decision like, yep, yep, 3D is where it's at. We're not going to do 2D movies anymore. That's it. We're you just, don't want to retrain. You're done. Yep, you're done. You're out of here. And uh, they had to go back. To the, like they had to get on their hands and knees and crawl back and bring these guys back because we're like nobody knows how to do two D animation at Disney anymore. I mean that's sad. So I think we need to you know find a balance here. But they're trying to say here are some examples of people being so outraged. The general public doesn't know. They might think it looks weird or it looks off or it looks uncanny valley, but the general public doesn't know how this stuff actually gets made. And they're not going to care. And I know it makes people angry when I say that. And they think I'm actually supporting AI. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm I, I support telling you. it on things that can make, like, it can streamline or be used as a tool to help people that are employed, not yeah. to replace people that are employed. Well, is where I'm at. But it's going to, because what's going to happen Sadly, is, like, yes. even in the animation, you're not going to need in-betweeners. The technology is already there. That's true. No matter the, what you do, someone's going to get gone. Yeah, you can do keyframes, and it can just fill in the blanks. You know, and you just clean this stuff up a little bit, but that just shaves off, you know, how many hundreds of hours on a production if you're doing 2D. If actors agree to it, you want to do a reshoot, well, you can just do it digitally if you want to, you know, with AI. So, yeah, if Wesley Snipes is going to be passive aggressive on another Blade movie. <laughs> we just used AI to, you know, like he was in the last one. I thought it was funny when he was giving them snark, but anyway. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, I think he would love to do it now, but yeah, I, it's here, guys. I don't know what to tell you. It's here, it's moving so much faster than anybody could have predicted and uh yeah we're 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 there and again i I would say a year or two we're gonna have an entirely ai generated movie i think that's that's where we're at right now was it like simone is that what it was oh where she was yeah yeah except they're actually gonna be able to do it yeah yeah so let's uh let's wrap this up please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants we'll talk later bye